Welcome back to Sustainable Energy. Today we're looking at how the chemical sector can become more sustainable. These days it appears there's always a new smartphone, television or gadget in the shops wanting to be bought. That's leading to a vast mountain of electronic waste as we chuck away old technology. But electronic waste contains valuable precious metals such as nickel, copper or even gold. The question is, how do we get it out? It turns out this big problem has a tiny solution as we found out in New Zealand. We're a clean tech uh, company based in Auckland, New Zealand and we've developed a uh, biological process for recovering uh, valuable metals from weird and wonderful feedstocks such as electronic waste. My name's Dr Ollie Crush. I'm the Chief Scientific Officer at Mint Innovation. We generate less emissions than something like a smelter would uh, and we don't have the harm of putting these metals into, or this electronic scrap, into landfill uh, to leach out into the environment. Good. The mint process for waste starts by taking the scrap and grinding it up into a sand-like consistency. And the reason we do this is that we need to make sure that we're exposing all the metal contained within uh, to a subsequent chemical leaching process. And for instance, when you look at circuit boards, they've got lots of chips on them. A lot of the value is contained within those chips, so we really need to make sure it's exposed. I'm just about to add some of the special micros we have for pulling out uh, one of the metals gold. Uh, so I've got a few of them in this bucket. And all I'm going to do is just add that in to the reactor. take this depleted powder and put it into another leaching agent, uh, non-cyanide based, that can dissolve precious metals. And it's to the soup that we then add uh, microbes, which are able to go in there and specifically pull out certain target metals. Nearly 50% of the value of e-waste comes from the gold that's used in the circuitry. Um, in fact, there's actually more gold in e-waste uh, as a concentration than there is in gold ore that's been mined, uh, which shows you the value of, of urban mining uh, and being able to take you know, your e-waste and recycle and reuse some of the elements that are found in it. And so coming up with methods for being able to separate and recycle those will be really critical. So at this stage in the process, uh, we have our recovered biomass. So these are the, the microbes that have gone into solution and plucked out a particular metal that we want, purifying it from the others. And in this particular case, it's gold that we're after. This material is about two or three percent by mass gold. So all we do is take this, send it off to a refiner, and they return us with a little nugget of gold. The fact that no day is the same and that researching um, the whole process from beginning of the scrap waste um, until the end, the final gold bars, uh, mean that it's always exciting and there's uh, lots to do. In recent years, developing nations have been clamping down on what waste they'll accept. So now Western nations are having to find a way to recover and process their own waste. So by offering a solution that's low capital costs, a footprint of a microbrewery, uh, we can see that being deployed in cities around the world. The future for Mint Innovation is to prove that our technology works with a number of different feedstocks. Uh, we've already shown that it works with electronic scrap, and we're now beginning to research uh, recovering palladium and other metals from scrap automotive catalytic converters. Uh, but there's a large number of weird and wonderful feedstocks out there, so we'll just keep trying to see where our microbial process makes more sense.
The report shows that green chemistry can be lucrative when applied to the recycling market. How can green chemistry pay off both environmentally and economically? So it's so important that you talk about recycling. I mean that we have a system where we take make and waste, we take things from the earth, we transform them, and then they go almost immediately to waste. In difficult economic times, we often hear people talking about, oh, we need to rebuild the economy. Do we want to rebuild an economy with all its flaws, or do we want to build anew? Why would we ever want to recreate an economy that is toxic, wasteful, depleting, and vulnerable? Green chemistry is looking at ways that you can use things that are renewable rather than depleting, helpful rather than toxic, restorative rather than degrading. So it's not only economically beneficial, it's not only more profitable, it is also something that is genuinely sustainable. How are companies addressing the issue of designing chemical products that can break down and degrade without persisting in the environment? So designing substances that are going to break down harmlessly into the environment is one of the great grand challenges and areas of research for green chemistry. And so we know how to design things so that they'll, they'll break down. Sometimes it's going to be by a certain temperature or a certain uh, exposure to sunlight or exposure to water when that's appropriate. What limits the development of green chemistry today? You know, the biggest limitation that green chemistry faces is a lack of awareness, a lack of awareness of what's possible today. With that awareness, there will be investment, there will be scale up. You teach students all over the world. What can we expect from this young generation of scientists? You know, Isaac Newton supposedly said, if I can see the horizon, it's because I stand on the shoulders of giants. The young people of today, they are the ones standing on the shoulders of giants that can see the horizon. They don't need to look for leaders. They are the leaders. They don't need to look for visionaries. They are the visionaries, and they are the ones that are going to take us there. That was a beautiful message for the young generations. Thank you very much, Professor Paul Anastas, for being with us on the show today. Thank you so much. It was a real pleasure being with you. to look at the way we make chemical products across their life cycle, maximizing efficiency whilst minimizing hazardous effects on humans and our environment. No wonder some people call it sustainable chemistry. Well, that's it for this edition of Sustainable Energy. If you'd like to comment on this program or our theme this year, Nature-Based Solutions, then do get in touch on Twitter at CNBC Energy. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, goodbye.